Hi everybody, my name is Olivia Riley and I am a graduate student in Dr. Sarah Brosnan's lab at Georgia State University. The title of my talk today is Risky Monkey Business, Measuring Capuchin Monkey Risk Behavior Using a Modified Balloon Analog Risk Task. There are several ways to measure risky decision making, yet there's a lack of standardized methods to do so, especially in the study of non-human primates. So some of the factors that differ between different studies include um, changing reward quantities, changing reward qualities, so high value versus low value foods, reward probabilities, um, trial counts can differ. There are some studies that use thousands of trials and some use far less than that. Inter-trial interval can change between studies to be long or short. And then the way in which the primates are tested in a manual task or a computer task can change as well. And so the question then becomes, are variation in results uh, due to actual variation in behavior or is it simply due to variation in methodology? So to find out, we developed a task based on the standardized human risk task, um, the balloon analog risk task. This task has been correlated with human risk behavior. Um, and it's a very simple task. The players just see a balloon on their screen and then they have the option to either inflate the balloon and earn something like five cents per inflation, uh, or they can cash out by clicking the cash out button. And that puts all of the money that they earned in the current trial into a permanent bank. Whereas um, sometimes the balloon will pop while they're inflating it. And when that happens, they lose all of the earnings that they had accrued up until that point in the trial. And so by the end of the session, um, risk propensity is measured by this risk score, which is the average number of inflations on cash out trials only. So not including trials in which the balloon pops. And remember the, the player does not know when the balloon pops. So they can inflate the balloon as much as they'd like. Their only instruction is that they need to maximize their reward. So if a person was playing to maximize their rewards, then in an array of 32 inflations, if a balloon could only be inflated up to 32 times, then the best strategy to most efficiently maximize reward would be to cash out on 16 inflations on average. Um, so for the first trial, there would be, in this example, a 1 in 32 chance of the balloon popping. On the second trial, there would be a 1 in 31 chance, and so on, down until the end, and so this is the point at which the player would be maximizing their reward. Um, so we created a modified version of this task to answer the following questions. Do capuchins maximize rewards? We know that humans tend to under-maximize, so we were curious whether capuchins would do the same. Um, will our modified task be able to capture individual differences in risky decision-making behavior in capuchin monkeys? And then finally, we were curious as to whether the outcome of previous trials impact decision making on the current trial, um, because the BART task is set up to be able to make that assessment. So first we asked human participants to complete both versions of the task. And in the modified task, you'll see that instead of a balloon, there was a yellow rectangle that they had to bring a cursor to to collect tokens instead of inflations. And they could use this bright pink cash out button whenever they wanted. Both the original and the modified version were set to have a maximum of 16 um, inflations or uh, token accruing um, so that the ratio is the same for both tasks. And we did indeed find a correlation between the two tasks. So we were confident that the modified version was measuring um, similar characteristics that the original task did. And so with that, we decided to bring the task over to our capuchin monkeys where we tested 21 adult capuchins that live at the Georgia State University Language Research Center and they all testing was voluntary for these monkeys they have extensive training in um, joystick computer testing and so they did not need to learn how to use a joystick because they had already known how to do that um, they all completed 16 to 20 sessions um, like I said it, all testing was voluntary, so some individuals just didn't want to play after 16 sessions. In that phase, they reached their final phase in which they could accrue as many or as few tokens as they would like and then be allowed to cash out. 
So going back to our question, what we found here is that, um, and this data is showing capuchin monkey data and human data. Um, the capuchins, these are all the sessions. Uh, so all the individuals completed between 16 and 20 sessions. And there were, um, these, this is including all of the humans who played the modified task as well. Um, as you can see, there is a lot of variability. Um, but what we find is that humans actually, on average, are um, maximizing more so than capuchins, um, who you can see on average are sort of, um, mo most of their data points are around the four inflation or four token mark. We do see individual differences in capuchins, um, and actually, even though we see a huge range in average risk score across all of their sessions, we see two general patterns emerge. So individuals either showed a significant increase in risk score and earnings across sessions, or they showed no evidence of learning across sessions. And so to look into that a little bit further, and then we also wanted to know whether the outcome of a previous trial impacted decision making on the current trial. So in other words, if the previous trial was a POP trial, would the capuchin monkeys then act more or less cautiously on the current trial? And we looked at this in humans as well. And what we found is that capuchins didn't really adjust their behavior based on the previous trial type. So if the previous trial type was a cash out trial, um, this is on average the risk score that capuchins had here, whereas if the previous trial was a popped trial in blue, um, you can see what the risk score was. And humans as a group um, showed overall higher risk scores than capuchins, but there was not a significant difference between how they responded to um, previous trial decision making. So what we learned from this task is that Capuchins do behave more cautiously than expected um, if they were playing to maximize their rewards, and they definitely behaved more cautiously than humans, um, although they did learn uh, how to increase their earnings significantly over time um, across 20 sessions. The modified BART also does a really nice job of capturing individual differences between capuchin monkeys um, as well as giving us a picture of how the species responds. And prior outcomes don't seem to influence current decision-making in this task for capuchin monkeys. Um, with that, I would like to thank my advisor, Sarah, Dr. Sarah Brosnan, and I would also like to thank the Language Research Center, and thank you for your attention.